Cancer, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation from Born Without Boundaries. In these weekly videos, I review the major planetary aspects and transits and how they impact your natal sun and what that means for your bottom line throughout the week. All you need to know to enjoy this video is your birthday. I'm going to translate everything else for you. I'm going to start really, really broad with sort of the global energies, what's happening right now in our solar system. Um, and then I am going to focus that down into cancer specific information. And then I will break everything down into the three decans of cancer, which will help me understand how your natal sun is being impacted. Um, you'll see that it's very different for all cancerians. So. Let's start out with the big stuff. There are no major transits this week, but there are a lot of interesting or impactful aspects. And a lot of those aspects revolve around Jupiter and Venus. So there is an optimism here. Now, it doesn't mean you're gonna have the best week ever. It means that globally there's a little bit of a lightening now. What a lightening, like it, things got lighter because things were really heavy and really intense a couple of weeks ago when we had Pluto square the sun and before that we had had Pluto square Mars and Pluto square Venus and, and then we had Pluto square the sun and then we had Mars go in opposition to Saturn. Very heavy energy. This is a lighter energy right now and it's good. I don't think it's the calm before the storm. I think it's the eye of the storm. I think the shit show and the storm began around that time a couple of weeks ago and right now we just got to wait for everything to play out. But there is kind of a light, a lightness about our energy right now. Now let me tell you what I think all this means. Jupiter is square the sun all week. It's also trying to Mars and by the 8th of this week it is going to be trying to Mercury as well because Mercury and Mars will conjunct each other. Um, I'm sorry, by the 6th, Jupiter will be uh, trying, to, trying to Mercury. Um, Mercury and Mars will conjunct by the 8th. So what does this mean? Well, it means we want, we want to move. We, want, we are energized to move forward. We don't want to stay in the same place. We're getting restless inside ourselves because we want to grow and we want to expand. This is really interesting energy, especially for what's coming up toward the end of this week, which is Neptune is going to up oppose Mars in a very loose opposition, which will get more intense next week. But at the end of this week, it's at about seven degrees of that opposition, and you'll start to feel that energy. This is very delusional energy. It's very difficult energy. It's distracting. It's it's energy that makes you kind of want to overcompensate for what you aren't or what you don't have by trying to prove yourself by doing these grandiose actions. Very, very conflicting energy. And with this buildup of this week of just wanting to move forward and wanting to be filled with joy and all of these things, what does that mean? Does it mean we're delusional? I don't think so. What I think it means is, and what I think it's going to try to impact is, are we delusional? It's almost like we're delusional by not believing that we can move forward in a slow and steady way toward change. What I think most of this delusion once Neptune is in opposition to Mars is going to happen is that we have to move quickly, that we have to act now, that if we don't do things now, then we're never going to get them. All of those kind of things and decisions made in that time will fall apart because it's not true. And I think it's an energy that is made to test the strong and to weed out the weak. This is not an energy of a time to believe in the deceptive voices in your head. This is an energy to believe in faith. And remember, let's come back around to where we are now today. This is Jupiter. Jupiter is very, very much a faith-based energy. So it's saying, we not, it's not moving forward in optimism or moving forward with luck. It's moving forward in faith. And if you have faith, you don't have to rush things. You don't have to push. You just have to have conviction enough to know every step I take is telling the universe that this is a direction that I'm defining for myself and I'm gonna stay in this direction. So even if we start getting hit by the storm that says, hurry, hurry up, hurry up, go quick, go quick, push quick, we can't. We can't listen to those voices that say, well, you have to prove yourself. You have to get this by a certain time. If you don't get this now, then you're never going to get it. You have to go. You have to push. No, you don't. And that's weeding out the weak. 
because the people who push themselves when Mars is opposite Neptune are going to are going to regret it. They are going to regret it because they're going to mess things up. They're going to be taking opportunities or chances. They're going to be like grasping at straws. They're going to be, you know, swatting at delusions. That's what they're going to be doing. And they're going to be wasting energy to do it. A Neptune, so Mars opposite Neptune is a huge waste of energy. So it's don't waste your energy. Slow and steady. You've held this pace, hold it still. It's just a couple more weeks. It's kind of what we're gearing up for right now. We also have Venus this week that is still square to Uranus, but it's trying to Chiron at the same time, which means that the changes that we want to make, the differences that we want to, the things that we are that are agitating us and make us want something new are based on the trying to Chiron, which means we've learned. We've learned lessons the hard way. And as long as you're making decisions based on those well-educated and practiced um, understanding lessons that you've learned, those changes are good. It's like, that's the rustling that we think, I think we need to listen to. Um, but the pushing, and this sense of if you don't get it done now and you don't get it done quickly, make this decision now. Don't make any decision now. Mercury is going into shadow period by the end of this week, the same time that Neptune is opposite Mars. Don't make any huge changes now. The energy and the progress, because remember, um, I'm sorry, Jupiter is still also trying to Mars. So if you proceed in faith, and not impulsivity and delusion. And faith is calm. It's serene. Slow and steady wins that race. You don't have to demonstrate or present to anybody or show them anything. Then you'll know you're stepping in the right direction. And you should be moving in the right direction because Jupiter trying Mars is actually a very blessed energy. Neptune will try to come in and fuck it up and get you to twist everything around and rush things. Don't do it. Just believe in your convictions and believe in your aspirations those things that your heart is telling you and don't get scared by making you think by believing that you have to show somebody something because you don't you don't have to show anybody anything right now and I wouldn't um let's get into the cancer specific energy what I look for for this is two things. What's going on in the zodiac sign of Cancer? And I can tell you right now, it's nothing. The, the moon doesn't even make its, by the, by the 10th, the moon doesn't even make its way back into Cancer. So nothing is happening in Cancer this, this week. Um, but we, are, we do have a lot going on with the moon. We always do. Um, the moon is in a very congested area of the zodiac wheel. So let's talk about how that could impact your moods day to day and I'm going to go day by day the moon is going to a move between 25 degrees Pisces to about 15 to 19 degrees Gemini between these days um say 25 degrees Pisces to 25 degrees Gemini we'll, we'll keep it even it's about from there to there so it's moving between the uh, third decan of Pisces and definitely the second into the third decan of Gemini um on the fourth the moon is going to conjunct Neptune and it's going to quincunx the sun. Distracted, unsatisfied, comparing your dreams or unrealistic expectations to other people. This could be a, a day that you feel a lot of pressure to prove yourself. It's a delusion. Sun conjunct Neptune is really psychic energy. And so if you're having an actual dream, I would write it down. I would pay attention to it because that's when our spidey senses are really freaking tingling. Do you know what I'm saying? So I would listen to those, but I wouldn't listen to uh, the daydreaming or believe the daydreaming or the longing or anything like that. That could be, this could be a very distracting day or a sleepy day. You could feel yourself being more tired than normal as well. Um, on the fifth, we have Chiron. Um, the moon is conjunct to Chiron and trying to Venus so this is learning through your mistakes being okay with all the challenges you've been through and the hits that you've taken and this could be actually a very lovely day for romance or you feel very romantic and this could create a lot of ease in your intimate partnerships we also have 
um, on the 6th, the still, the moon is going to be trying to Venus. It's going to be conjunct the north node and square to Pluto by that point, though. So there could be a major shift that comes in this harmony or because of this beauty and this kind of grace that you have now especially with your intimate partnerships could also be some news that comes in on the six regarding your finances that changes the game for you just an fyi um we also have the okay so we move on to the seventh um on the seventh the moon will conjunct to jupiter that's a very optimistic energy for you guys trying to mars trying to mercury and square the sun so you might have some conflict between what you see and what you feel. So I would go with your gut. I would trust that optimism. Trying to Mars, trying to Mercury means that you're feeling energized and you're feeling sharp. So this is actually also a really, a really great day. Anything that's compromising your sense of self or sense of self-esteem, go, go with your instincts, go with your intuitions. Um, on the 8th, the moon will conjunct to Uranus. It'll be trying to Pluto and square to Venus. This is a day for change and to get comfortable with change and have a certainty about you that won't back down. Let's move on to the 9th. On the 9th, the moon is square to Saturn, which could cause some family issues or challenges within the family or challenges with rules, laws, and regulations it's only going to last a day but you could also feel more restricted and more confined and more held back and that could be very frustrating for you um, on the 10th the moon is going to be squared to mercury and square to mars so i would say this to you don't try to push anything on the 10th at all in any way don't do it because remember the 10th is also kind of where that loose opposition to Neptune begins and if you're conjunct um, no you're going to be square to uh, Mercury and Mars that means you're loosely also square to Neptune self-deception is high on this day also distractibility and feeling drained of energy so it may be a personal day a good personal day or a day for you to to ease up on yourself be as compassionate to yourself as possible and um, allow things to kind of flow instead of trying to initiate. FYI. Let's go into the decans of cancer, shall we? If you know that your natal sun is between zero and nine degrees cancer, you are cancer one because your sun falls in the first decan of cancer. This correlates to June cancerians. Cancerians who were born anywhere between June 22nd and say July 1st would be or up through the 30th would, would be a Cancer 1. Your natal suns are semi-square to the sun, so there could be some arrogance or issues with your ego today. Um, there's also a sextile to Venus, so this is a beautiful time for romance and relationships. Um, this could also be a nice time for finances and money. Um, we have... Um, yeah, looking good, you know, feeling optimistic, all of those things, I would say, um, will will happen this week. The semi-square to the sun may just be you're, you're a little hesitant to believe all the optimism, but um, it's there. It's definitely there because we also have a trine to the south node and a, a sextile to, I'm sorry, hold on a second. This is the cusps only, I should say this. So the cusps are June 22nd, June 23rd. Those are you guys especially. Um, let me, I'm so sorry, guys. I wrote this down wrong. So let me think really quickly. Cancer ones are sextile to the north node and trine to the south node. I apologize. I had to look at, I had to like look at the chart in my head. That's what I had to remember. What does this mean? That you're comfortable with where your life is headed. That you're comfortable with what you have to offer and who you are. And that is causing a lot of harmony in your relationships. Remember the south node is in Libra right now. A trying to that would mean there's a lot of harmony in your relationships right now. And a sextile to the north node means there's a lot of confidence or it's creating that harmony at, at home or in your partnership is creating a lot of confidence in your own individuality. 
So that could be what's happening right now. And that sextile to Venus certainly does support that there is a loving energy all about you and your relationship this week. You have a long-term trying to Saturn. So over the course of this year, this is career advancement through hard work. FYI, but it is a blessing. Let's move on to Cancer 2s. So if you know that your natal sun is between 10 and 19 degrees Cancer, you are a Cancer 2 because your sun is in the second decan of Cancer. This correlates to Cancers definitely born between the 2nd and the 11th or say the 1st and the 10th in and around there. Um, and if you're on the cusp, you can listen to both. Um, but I will always call out specific day, dates if you guys are going to be impacted by it. So your natal suns are going to have a fan. This is actually a really wonderful week. The only troublesome, slightly troublesome energy, only if you're born around the first or second, is a semi-square to Venus. It's those of you right on the cusp between the first and second decan that would have a semi-square to Venus right now. Um, ultimately, that could just mean some tension or restlessness when it comes to finances or your desirability or your feelings of how you look could compromise a little bit about, about your S personal aesthetics. Um, it's not horrible energy. It's just sort of frustrating energy. Um, and if you're born between the 9th through the 12th, so that goes into the third decan. Um, but if you're born between July 9th and July 12th, you're also in a pretty tight square. Your natal suns are in a tight square to Chiron, which is all about kind of feeling like everything is extra hard on you. It's because you're going through a lot of life lessons right now to try to strengthen you and teach you and improve you. Just an FYI, that's long term though. All week long, all of you are going to be sextile to Mars, sextile to Mercury, and sextile to Jupiter. There could not be a more beautiful week for, for advancement, productivity, and opportunity. It is absolutely gorgeous energy. Please use it and use it well and use it wisely. And most of you don't even have to worry about that semi-square to Venus. Semi-squares aren't really tr worrisome anyway. So I would say all of you are in for a quite beautiful week this week. Absolutely, take those opportunities. And then we have um, Cancer 3s. If you know that your natal sun is between 20 and 29 degrees Cancer, you are Cancer 3s. This correlates to Cancerian birthdays between, say, July 12th and the 22nd. So we're Cancers all the way up through the 22nd. Um, your natal suns are the ones in opposition to Pluto, especially if you're born on the Leo cusp, 21st, 22nd tight opposition to Pluto that means there's a lot of change and courage to make change in your life and you're giving off a real formidable energy that makes people take you more seriously uh, that's long term uh, you have a semi square to Mars and a semi square to Mercury so this would this would be like any kind of any kind of information or action you're taking to sign paperwork and things like that frustrating it'll frustrate the crap out of you it doesn't mean you can't get it done but it will frustrate you. Um, so this isn't a great time to schedule important signings or to, to take action on important contracts or make any promises about uh, or commitments to moving things forward. This is, this is not a time. This would be the time when you basically self-care and just let yourself hang back a little bit because your energy can be a little bit compromised in this energy, especially since Mercury is going into its shadow period. Um, this could intensify any kind of obstructions when it comes to communications or um, your, your technology or anything like that. You are, however, in a long-term sextile to Uranus. And what does that mean? It means that over long-term, over the next couple of years, you guys are going to be discovering aspects of yourself that you didn't realize you were interested in. And yes, your life could definitely a change because of these new interests so you should let yourself because this is where your opportunities will come from those unexpected places um, you also have a long-term square to the nodes and this will be true for the next six months and that just means also your life is changing especially where it concerns your individuality versus your partnership and how you feel about yourself and how you fit into that role 
it's a time to recalibrate yourself uh, based on those um, on those themes right individuality and partnership and how do I find the balance between the two and changing your life with that opposition to Pluto based on those nodes which are square right now in the next six months um, you also have a long-term trine to Neptune, which is creative energy, beautifully creative energy. So it's your, you are so capable of conceiving of yourself in a completely different way, Cancer 3s. You should let yourself. This week, it's, you're not going to take any huge leaps forward because of those frustrating energies between you, Mars, and Mercury. But ultimately, over the next year or so, this is a, especially over the next six months, this is a beautiful time to transform your life toward your higher evolved self. And you'll see that you'll start to favor things that you never favored before, be interested in things that you didn't you weren't interested in before, especially over the next 6 months. So you let me know in the comments below how this energy is impacting you and then come on over to Born Without Boundaries Tarot for your week ahead tarot card message. Um yeah, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so we can grow over here as well. I love you guys, and I'll see you next week.